Okay. Uh, would anyone like to share anything this morning or comment on or ask any questions? I had something that I'd love to share. I was playing with finding my home in the different postures and exercises. And um, it felt like somehow that really did something for me. Like it, it engaged, I think I was feeling my whole body. Um, and it's a little bit of a different frame than what if I had to be in this posture forever, which felt a little bit more like, I don't know, there was an edge of fear. And finding my home felt like, uh, how can I be comfortable? How can I enjoy this? I think it brought more enjoyment. And um, I, I felt like, actually, I could really feel the, the um, constriction in my breath that was keeping me from feeling at home. And, um, and then, you know, realized my attention was going there to where my breath was caught up and then was remembering the feedback you had given me in the last class about just feeling the light behind me, behind my heart and inside of me. And it felt like that started to kind of ease it. And then, but also just wasn't quite big enough. Um, so I started to feel like, what if I'm the universe, you know, and, um, and I'm this little point in the universe and the breath really let go. And it just, it felt like the portal to this whole other uh, experience of the gold series today. So wanted to share that and thank you for the, the feedback about feeling the light behind me and then incorporating that and feeling it radiating because it felt like that really shifted things for me. Mm. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. As <clears throat> trying to work just with yourself it doesn't really work right it's like it shows that we're really part of the really the greater universe you know that's this oneness that and it's actually one of the reasons why uh just working on the body part doesn't work just like you experience it's actually one of the reasons why right like the light comes in, transforms your body, and then the light goes back out and then transforms the whole universe. Uh, and then you just rest in that. Uh, but it's an entire marriage or dance with the universe itself. And you can't actually solve a localized problem, right? It's kind of like trying to solve um, let's say for instance, a neck kink without considering the rest of your body. And, you know, like if you study the body, you find out that actually most neck problems are actually in your tailbone. Uh, and if you don't consider that, then you can't actually resolve it. And, but then, you know, it's kind of like, I heard someone say, and I kind of really like this, the, the, the fish tank analogy uh, where basically, you know, if a fish is sick, then, you know, do you try and feed the fish antibiotics and, you know, uh, try and fix the fish or do you clean out the tank? That probably made the fish, uh, not probably, but that made the fish sick. If the fish tank is clean and has no problems, you know, then you need to look at the fish, right? And so it's kind of like you're sharing kind of just brings back of how oftentimes when we're trying to solve something, we actually try and solve it, uh, solve the problem in the vacuum, in a vacuum uh, outside the context of all that we are. Um, and if, and this is, I think to me, what excites me, really kind of what excites me. If you had to realize that you're the whole universe for it to work, isn't that an interesting realization? <clears throat> then it feels like a lot of responsibility. Oh, geez, responsibility. <laughs> I, I wasn't even thinking that. 
<laughs> I was thinking in terms of the amount of freedom and joy and mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what responsibility. <clears throat> responsibility, you know, uh, if you want to look at a universe size fear of things could go wrong, then you might have to look at responsibility, right? But the point I'm trying to make here is, is that, that how small do we see ourselves? And how separate we see ourselves. Like, you know, for you to actually find freedom, you had to realize you're the universe. And before that, and you know, it's kind of interesting. Your body tenses when things, something is not true and your body relaxes when there's truth. You can easily do this exercise uh, where you can feel your body. And let's say for instance, you know, uh, if you know, your name is Mary and you say, I am Mary, you'll notice that your body relaxes. But if you say, I'm Spock, uh, well, if you, I mean, in that case, you might laugh. But if you say, I'm Bob, you'll notice that your body tenses. You can try that right now, actually. Um, and what you notice is, is that if you say on something untrue, your body tenses, which is how you know lie detection works and things like that. But the point here is, is that um, your body relaxed when you realized that you're the universe. Isn't that interesting? So that means that there was more truth than that. Then whatever belief you had before. And I think that's an interesting way to look at things. You know, it's an interesting way to look at the universe and the nature of all things. And look at what it is as human beings struggling with and dealing with. Because, you know, all our suffering comes from feeling separated from all that, you know, from a division. It comes from fear. It comes from, you know, not being honest about who we are. It comes from a sense of, yeah, actually it comes from a sense of feeling like we're not enough. And the reason we even have to ponder not being enough is because we're worried about not being accepted and not being part of, uh, meaning being separated. And so the whole thing, all of tension comes from a sense of separation and a sense of feeling like you can't have oneness because there's something wrong with you. And it's that separation, you know, that tortures us and it's not actually the separation that we're trying to remedy if we really think about it. And, you know, if we think that the universe is this vast thing and we're this small thing and we're not worth much, instead of actually realizing we are the universe, we're connected to it, we're part of it. And just by our own being, we have worth. I mean, that's a very different way of looking at things. But what I wanted to bring notice is to the truth. The truth that you're the universe and the truth that um, you're enough and that you're one and that you're not separate and that your body recognizes that. Anyways, and so I just wanted to just bring notice to that. 
because I feel like that contemplation as to what is the true nature of who you are. And then actually being able to find something that allows for more unison, that allows for more oneness, you know, that allows for more wholeness and all those words. So just want to create an avenue of exploration in that direction because we live in a world where we believe we're separate. We, lose, we live in an illusion that we have to be afraid and that we're, if we're not afraid that we can't have a good life when it is fear itself that's making life miserable. Thank you, Master Tim. I feel like what you said is making the felt experience more concrete. And I can feel my mind kind of toggling back and forth between the mind coming in and, and feeling the fear and then going back to the felt experience, which I really appreciated the you know, the, the piece that you said about actually that that's more true, you know, that my body relaxed because, because it was true. It's not an idea, it's an experience. Um, but then, yeah, just noticing the, I guess the habit of the mind coming in and going to the fear and then just reorienting to the, um, the felt experience and being able to, <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> you know, let me just say one more thing because <laughs> we're dealing with fear. So, um, someone might make the argument what if I'm delusional and I'm happy because I'm delusional? You know, and, and I've heard that argument before. Now, I find it to be a very interesting argument. Um, and so, <clears throat> karma, that if we uh, discuss the concept of karma, it's actually basically a pattern we're not aware of that's bringing us suffering that we're trying to actually uh, rise above. Would you agree with that? Definitely. Okay, very good. So th that was a very strong uh, agreement. So thank you, I appreciate that. So, uh, but then what that means is, is that there's a built-in concept about learning. So it's kind of interesting. So enlightenment, uh, we think of it as a static thing. Maybe we should call it an enlightening ment. So it's not so static, but basically enlightenment means that there's enough light for you to be able to see clearly. At least, you know, that's how I'm defining it. <laughs> so it doesn't become too conceptual. And so if let's say for instance, you know, uh, the knowledge comes when you need it, then, or you have access to it, then that's the same as having knowledge to all of the universe, right? So that doesn't mean that you need to know everything. That means that you just need to access whatever it is um, when the time is appropriate. Would you say from, from a practical perspective? It has the same effect? Yeah. So, which is what we call learning. So we just need to get better at learning. And so let's say for instance, you had a truth, your body relaxed, then there's something true about it because otherwise your body could have not relaxed. So maybe parts of it wasn't entirely true, but then why do we need to be disappointed about the whole thing? That's I think what we call throwing out the baby with the bathwater. So in that case, isn't all we need to do just keep that which is true and then just let go of that which is not true which is called learning and then we just go further into the light yes right so now if um you don't have this learning perspective which is dharma 
So another way to say dharma is basically, you know, if you understand your karma and you've learned how to work with it, it's called your dharma, which is your purpose. So now, if that's a case, then the very concept of dharma is actually being able to use what you've learned from working on your karma. So is like there's a very concrete learning concept in there. So if let's say for instance, this concept of truth is not understood as an evolving understanding of enlightenment, you know, meaning as in things become clearer and clearer. And if we go into the traditions until you become light itself, then of course there will be fear because there's no safety. In that case, of course, you'd have to give the power to fear and be constantly afraid until you've reached, I guess, light body where everything is luminous. But then, you know, fear is the opposite of light. It's darkness because that's where fear resides. So if you keep focusing on darkness, how can you ever find light? I mean, you find more darkness. So you'd learn more about darkness, the more darkness you seek, because we get what we seek. But if we seek light, then we get more and more light and we release more and more illusion. And so if we look at fear outside the concept of learning. And so now as you experience light, you'll probably expose more areas of darkness. So once you come across that, you focus on more light, then you keep going in that direction. And if you try and understand that outside of this concept of learning, then you're gonna keep looking for this place where you'll have arrived. But, and I'm not saying that place doesn't exist, but, how much does it benefit you? Let's say, for instance, you're uh, going from here. Let's say, for instance, you're going from Chicago to New York. And how much does it benefit you for you to wonder whether you have arrived? Not much, probably. Yeah, it's in the way. But what if when you arrive, won't you know? Yeah. The signs will say it. So do you have to worry about whether you're going to get there or not until you're there? You just need to keep course correcting and keep learning, right? So spending any time worrying about whether you're there or not, or whether you have arrived. So let's say for instance, you took the wrong direction and went to Chicago. And then you're like, oh, is this New York? And it's like, no, this is Chicago. And then now you spend another month beating yourself up for going to Chicago instead of New York. Are you any closer to New York? Definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. Are you any closer to light? Right, and it's like the same question. And so, you know, it's like, it's just all learning. It's all learning until you arrive. And you don't need to worry about not arriving because that's gonna take care of itself when you learn. 
<laughs> the real question is, are you learning or not? Because the moment you, you know, let's say for instance, you want to go to New York because, you know, you want to know what that city is like. If you go to Chicago, maybe you hit the wrong city, but you gotta, and let's say for instance, you know, you're from, uh, from the rural areas. You never seen a big city. Well, at least you're gonna know what the big city is like. You're gonna be a little closer. Maybe it's not the exact experience, but you'll have learned, especially if that's the focus where it's on. And so trying to understand this and get to this place that you're trying to get to from a place of fear. It's like that can take you further and further away and delay and further and further because the only real question is, oh, what is there for me to learn from this? What I have not learned yet. And in order to do that, you need to know what you've already learned, what you already have. And that brings gratitude. <sighs> Anyways, so I kind of just want to just draw this picture, you know, because I see very common people have this realization, have these great experiences, I'm the universe, which is the truth. And then they're like, oh, then go straight back, who am I? Am I delusional? Yada, yada, yada. Uh, actually, you will never find out until you stay being the universe. And then once you stay being the universe, you're gonna find out what it means to be the universe. And you're gonna have a lot of learning that comes from being the universe. But if you go like, if you wonder, it's kind of like you got to New York and then you're like, is this really New York? You keep doubting it. And then all the signs and all the people and everyone is saying you that this is New York, but you gotta make sure. You could be in New York and never experience it. You could be in New York and doubt the whole experience. Thank you. I feel like that's a really clear end picture of, you know, if you stay in fear the whole time, then even if you get there, that's, that's what you end up with. And it feels like the alternative to that, you know, when you're talking about learning, it felt like another word for that would be grace, you know, like the, just the process of it. Um, and seeing it as a process versus as a static thing and the, uh, the ability that we have um, to learn from everything feels like grace, you know, that's just built into the system that even if you're trying to go to New York and you go backwards and end up back in Chicago, you can still learn from that if that's your orientation so yeah thank you so much for that bigger picture and those images which feel like they really point the way you know i want to say that grace you know i think you could say the grace is second chance right getting a second, right? And so now I wanna make sure like grace is not so difficult. So if you get to learn, that's a second chance, right? Yeah. And if you have the joy of learning, <clears throat> and so I, I just wanna make sure that like, like definitely it's like all based on grace. But I feel like grace is typically understood from a punishment perspective, not from a uh, child learning and from a joy perspective. 
a child is experiencing grace all the time. But does a child say, oh, I'm experiencing grace. I'm so glad that there's grace. To me, that's a bastardized no, like, adult. Yeah, they're just in it. Right? They are it. Right? So like when people talk about grace, typically that's an adult bastardized version of real grace. Uh, real grace. And I'm not like really docking on that per se as an, it's an important experience to experience grace when you feel beaten up and then you feel grace and that's a part of it. But I don't want that picture to be the norm because, you know, kids feel beat up and things like that. But, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Jesus said, you know, you know, it's uh, as people who are childlike or like these children, that will enter the kingdom of heaven, meaning as in the state of oneness and happiness and experiencing this sense of oneness with God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we are thinking from our grace of, you're being beat up all the time, you're making mistakes, but it's okay. That's not a really great empowered learning perspective. Like, you know, at least when I'm learning, I. I feel a lot of joy in learning. It's like, wow, this is like really awesome. At least, yeah, it's in... more, it's more division if it's just the grace that comes out of punishment or doing yeah. something wrong. Yeah, and it doesn't, it's not that we don't experience it from time to time, but if that is like the definition of grace, to me, that's like, that's terrible. It's like, if that was like 80 to 90% of your life, I want the life that a child has where they get to play and they get to explore and they get to just be authentic and be themselves. And the definition, there are many traditions, but the definition of enlightenment, you know, that I learned um, was basically that there is a form of ultimate enlightenment, but practically speaking, when you are learning, there's no difference because basically you have the experience of realization from moment to moment. And actually I find it to be very true. Basically your brain stays in gamma and you're basically learning how to train your brain to stay in gamma because you're continuously learning but then the more learning you have, and so you, actually research shows that people who, you know, are good learners, not from a place of fear or from a perspective of performance, but people who just enjoy learning, you know, they found that people who are happy, uh, this is uh, actually an you know, authentic happiness. That's a good, great book, but I believe Martin Seligman, um, and he talks about this. He talked about how, the people who are happy are people who believe they can change. The people who are defensive are people who don't actually have the faith that they can change, which actually implies learning. And so, and those people don't even think about it. They don't even think, oh, I got to learn. That's not even a concept. They just adjust because they know they can change. Their identity, it's so fundamental in their identity. And so, you know, it's kind of like, so it's, it's not a learning that's based on performance so I gotta learn it's not like you know I gotta be a student no it's actually just more like oh wow this is really interesting it's like oh I get to do this um it's more from that perspective and I kind of just want to just say that because I want I feel like this these pictures are so important I feel like we're so beat up in life uh often that the best picture that we can have is getting a little band-aid when we're beat up and, you know, when you're a child, you can be playing and you're playing sports and then you fall. And then, you know, mommy comes along and puts a Band-Aid. And it's a great experience. And then you get back up and then you go. And sometimes grace is like that, but you know, the rest of grace is, as you said, you're in it and you are it. That's the real grace. And I'd like you to have that kind of grace, not the other kind of grace where grace is seen as 
the moment where you scrape your knee and you have to put on the band-aid, the low moments. Grace that's so limiting. Uh, real grace is where it's joy, gratitude, just the, just the, the stuff of life where it's just overflowing. Um, anyways, okay. Now I'm done cleaning. <laughs> so I gotta close this. <laughs> I'm over time. So, Thank you so much, uh, Master Kim. You're welcome. So, okay. Uh, you'll have just a grand day and uh, it's a day full of grace. <laughs> and talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Master Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Master Kim. You're welcome.